Hey, what do all the images that you see behind me here have in common? Perhaps they're all animals? No. Perhaps they're all living things? No. What they have in common is that they share a common pattern called a Voronoi pattern, named after this guy. And as you can see, Voronoi patterns are very, very common in nature. They're also not too, too hard to create in a computer. So they make a great tool in your artist's toolbox. So let's find out how to make them. The basic idea behind Voronoi is to create a bunch of random points on a 2D plane. And then for each pixel, we're gonna figure out which point is the closest to that pixel and color the pixel based on that. So that gives us something like this. And if we color it based on the actual distance from that point, we get something like that, which already looks pretty cool. So let's try to make that. So I have here an almost new shader toy. The only thing that I, that I changed is, well, I made it a black color. I changed my UV so they go from minus one to one. And then I added this, uh, this function that takes as an input a vector two and as an output it gives a random vector two between zero and one. And so we can test that real quick. We can go float m equals n22 and then uv. And then I need to take, let's say, the x component of that. And now you can see that I have some random numbers there. So now what we want is we want to generate a bunch of points randomly on, on the screen. Uh, so for that, I'm gonna make a loop. So I'm gonna use i for that, i equals zero. i is smaller than, let's say, 50, i plus plus. And then inside of here, I'm gonna generate some random moving points. So because it's moving, I'm gonna use i time for that. So I put that in my variable t over here. And then, so inside of here, I can generate a random uh, a random point, but the only thing that changes inside of this loop is this value i, and I need a vector two over here. So for that, I just turn my i into a vector two. So you can do that. That's just, that's the same as just doing this i comma i. So now I have a random number here between zero and one. So let's call that n. And now I want to turn that into a random, random moving position. And for that, I can just do this, P equals the sine of N times T. And so what that will do is because this N is a vector two with, with two numbers that are different, uh, like, so it means like this, this will give me a vector two of a sine wave, but like signs at different speeds. So if you have a sine at a different speed in the X direction, as you have in the y direction, uh, then you're just gonna get some distorted twisted circle shape. Uh, and because my sign goes from zero, uh, sorry, from minus one to one, uh, that will fit fine because my UVs also go from minus one to one. Um, so let's quickly try this out here. So I'm gonna set my M value to zero over there. And then over here, I'm gonna calculate the distance uh, from my UV to my point like that. And then I, I can use a smooth step to cut out a, a circle. Uh, if you don't know what I'm doing, uh, then you're probably new to shaders. Check out this video instead um, and then come back later here because I'm going over this a little bit faster than I normally would. So let's say, Da, da. and then D. So let's see what that does. Um, and plus equals that. Oh, okay. Obviously I shouldn't say float M here because I already have it over here. So let's try this again. Okay, now we have a bunch of points. And let's see what those points are doing. Okay, so those points are all, are, are all moving kind of randomly. Um, they're moving in a square right now because um, uh, I, I uh, like over here I account for the aspect ratio and over here I don't. Um, but let's leave it like this. It's actually kind of cool uh, the effect it will give later. So 
Uh, let me make the dots a little bit smaller. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to calculate the minimum distance. So for each pixel, we need to calculate the, 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 the point that is the closest. And so for that, I, can, I, I have to keep track of that. So I have to have a float called min dist, and I need to initialize that as some large distance. And then over here, I can say, if d is smaller than min dist, uh, so that like that means that like the, that the the distance to the current position is closer than the closest distance we measured before. Well, then we just need to say that min dist equals d. All right. So now let's see what happens if we visualize this min dist over here and see what that looks like. And there you have your Voronoi. So that's really all it takes. Um, so let me just also make them move a little bit slower. There you go. Well, maybe that's a bit too slow. Anyways, you get the idea. So pretty cool. Um, so now there's a few, there's a few things. Um, the first thing is, so this was the first visual, uh, the second visualization where we just visualize the distance to the center of the cell. If we wanted to, somehow do something different for each cell outside of this loop, then we need to keep track what the actual closest cell was. So for that, uh, we could do something like this. We could say float cell index equals zero, let's say over here. And then inside of this, this uh, if statement here, we can say cell index equals I so that each time it gets in there, if it's closer than the previous previous closest point, it will update cell index. And now outside of here, we can use that cell index to uh, to color the point. So what we could do, although my cell index right now, it is larger than one. So this will just make a wide screen, right? Except for the zero screen over here uh, for the zero cell in the middle. Um, but if we want to visualize all of them, we have to also we'd have to multi, uh, divide this by the same the same number over here, and then you can see that each cell has a different grayscale, and you can map that to colors or do whatever you want. Um, all right, so that is the naive way to do Voronoi, or naive like I, I wouldn't say maybe you wouldn't say naive because it, it like it does allow you to do a uh, make a few effects that you you couldn't otherwise uh, But there is perhaps one problem with this which is that if you increase the number of cells over here This really isn't very efficient at all because for each pixel We we have to test the distance to all of the points and so for 50 points you could still do that but if you do 500 points uh, Then it will like at like at some point it will get, well, it's actually still pretty fast, but at some point it will get slower and slower and slower. And so uh, that's one thing. And the other thing is that this does not give you a uniform distribution. You can already see it a little bit that the cells in the middle are larger than the cells on the edge. Um, well, like apart from the fact that that they're stretched over here. But if if the aspect ratio thing was was good, then the, the cells in the middle would definitely be a lot larger than the cells on the edge. So if we if we don't want to evaluate things 50 times uh, and we want the cells a uh, similar size, then we can do this a little bit different. So so let's do that. So let me um, let me disable this by saying if false. So this is a way this is a way to just disable a certain part of the code because if false is always false and therefore it will never get in here, right? So and I can do else and then put something over here. So so now is there's an easy way to switch between different parts of the code. Instead of calculating a distance to all of the points, uh, I'm just going to overlay a grid onto the screen and for each pixel I'm first going to figure out which grid cell I'm in and then I'm just going to calculate the distance to the nine neighboring grid cells or the eight neighboring grid cells plus the cell itself. 
because any grid cell, any any points outside of the grid cell, like there, they can never be the closest point to to whatever is in this grid cell. So let's do that. So well, the first thing I have to do is I have to generate a grid, right? So for that, I'm going to go vec to GV for grid UV equals. Uh, let's see here. Well, yeah, let me let me just go over here and let me multiply my UV. Uh, so now it goes from minus 10 to 10. And then for my grid UV, I'm going to say take the fractional value of that and subtract 0 0.5 from it. And let's visualize that. Um, so for that, I have to I have to put my color on top here so that I can actually write into it because otherwise it doesn't exist yet. So let me just put that over there. So this should give me a black screen. And then over here I can visualize my GV. So I can say cold.rg equals GV. So that gives me a bunch of grid cells. Maybe maybe make it a little bit smaller so we can actually see something. So these are all grid cells that have zero in the middle. Um, then I also have to make an ID for, for each grid cell because we need to know which grid cell we're actually in. So for that, I'm going to do ID equals floor, um, the floor of the UV coordinate. And so, so this will be zero zero in the middle and then one zero and then two zero and then like if you go from zero zero up it's like zero one zero two and so on and so forth we can visualize that real quick just to see what that looks like so that will give me a black and then full primary colors because it goes up by one each time so if you want to visualize that properly we have to multiply this by some smaller value and now you can see that for each grid cell this has its own value and in the negative part it also has its own values just as you can see it it's black um, all right so there we have that so now what we can do is we can uh, make a a, a, a loop or make two loops that go from uh, from X well if this is our cell that we're currently in uh, we want to calculate an offset to our cell so the offset to this cell would be zero zero but like to the left would be minus one zero so minus one in the X direction and zero in the Y direction uh, and so on and so forth so here would be minus one minus one here would be zero minus one here would be one minus one and then uh, it like it, it goes like that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a loop float y equals start that loop at minus one and then y is smaller than or equals one and y plus plus and then I'm going to inside of that loop I'm going to make another loop for the x so x and x and x so so what this will do it it will loop through all of the all of the cells basically um, and then i have to calculate the position in each of those cells so so first let's make a uh, an offset vector that is just the x and the y and now uh, let's copy this here for the position and so we just copy the same thing for the position. Uh, but now in instead of I here, we're going to use uh, the offset for that. Uh, do I have that correct? No, we're going to use the ID plus the offset. So, so over here, um, I have to add the offset to the ID. So it's the ID plus the offset because the ID is is always going to be the the middle cell so id plus offset would be one of the other cells here and if this looks familiar to you uh, it is uh, we also use this same technique in the universe within tutorial you can check out here um, so yeah often oftentimes uh, similar techniques come back 
so okay so now we have the position here so now over here i need to add the offset as well because basically over here i'm just getting the random the random number for the other cell and then uh i have to to act to get the actual position um in like in in relation to the current cell i still have to add this offset uh, and now I, I basically do the same thing. So I, st I, I have that min dist again. So, uh, so basically I, I can just copy this, this thing here. Um, and so I, I calculate the distance from the current point to the, to the UV, uh, sorry, to the GV in this case, to the grid UV. Uh, and then I have to check what the closest distance is. So if, well, basically it's the same thing as this. Um, it's just that our cell index is, um, is a little bit different now. Our cell index would be a vector tool two in this case. So let me just get rid of this for one second. Um, and then when we get out of that, so when we get out of the out of the double loop over here, I can say call equals vec three min dist. Uh, there we go. We have a bunch of errors here because I miss a decimal dot over here and over here. And now we have a screwed up Voronoi and that is because okay it's because my points go too far so so my boxes so like the the little um, the little GV boxes they they actually go from minus 0.5 to 0.5 um, so in this case I have to make sure that my that the position that I calculate here because this goes from minus 1 to, to to 1 so this goes outside of the box that's why you have this screw up here so if I multiply this by 0.5 that should go away and it does so now you have something that is much more regular than the than the other one and also it's much more um, much more performant because now for each pixel no matter how many grid cells I have so I could have a ton of grid cells here it doesn't matter how many i have it always just does nine look lookups for each for each um uh like for each pixel so that's so that's great but i think both approaches have their uh, have their advantages and disadvantages so now a few a few more things let me let me just make this a little bit bigger again so there's a bunch of uh, different things. Oh, uh, by the way, I forgot the cell index over here. So for the cell index, um, what we want to uh, store actually is this ID plus offset here. So if you, if you wanted to, then we could make a vec2 here and I call it cell ID, let's say, equals vec2 zero. And then over here, I have to say, cell ID equals ID plus offset. And now over here, uh, we could um, we could do something like that. So I could do call dot uh, RG equals cell ID. And then I probably have to multiply that by some smaller number because it's gonna go out of the zero one range. Yeah, so now you can see that, well, perhaps it's a bit hard to see, but every every well over here you can see that every cell has a different color now uh, so that's that's how you could um, figure out which the closest cell is over here and then over here you can use that cell id to do whatever you need to do um, okay so let's just go back to this real quick so there's a few there's a few things that we can play with um, one of those things is that the this distance over here Right now, uh, I, have, I have the distance as the uh, Euclidean distance, which is just the as the crow flies distance. Uh, there's different distance metrics that you can use here. You can also use what's called the Manhattan distance. And a Manhattan distance is like, imagine you live in Manhattan, you need to go from A to B. Well, you can't go in a straight line because there's buildings and there's, there's, building, there's, uh, there's, there's blocks, right? There's city blocks. 
So the Manhattan distance is the distance you would actually have to go. Uh, so you would have to first go in one direction, a bunch of blocks, and then in another direction, a bunch of blocks. And so the Manhattan distance is the absolute P dot X. Um, no, actually, uh, so for for the Manhattan distance, uh, let, let, let's let's just uh, build this GV into the P. So I can go over here, I can do P minus equals GV. So, so this is the same as what I just had, right? So instead of having minus GV over here, I just have it over here. Uh, and now I can say my Manhattan distance is the absolute distance in the X, right? It doesn't matter if I go east or west, it still counts as distance. And then the same thing with north and south. So I put P dot Y. So now check what happens. So now I have, this is the Manhattan distance. So, so it's, it's not organic anymore perhaps, but, um, or maybe it could be, maybe it could be some sort of crystal growth or what have you. Um, that's a totally different look. Um, and the last thing that I want to show you guys is that you can, um, you can interpolate between those two distances. So, so what I could do is I could say over here, so this is my Manhattan distance, right? Float Manhattan distance. Uh, this is my Euclidean distance. And then I could say over here, distance equals, I could just mix those two together. I could say uh, Euclidean distance and uh, Manhattan distance. And then I could like mix those and see what that does. So that that kind of gives a, again a more organic look. So like now you can kind of fade between between those two. Let's let's see what that looks like. Let's uh, do something like this. Uh, I time times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So now I'm just fading between those two. And let's just go a little bit faster so we can actually see it. So there you go. Um, so this, the Voronoi effect is an effect that you can, that you can use as a basis for many different effects. You could imagine that you can make different layers of this and, and put them together in different ways. Or you could imagine that when you're inside of a cell, you do Voronoi again, but smaller. So you have like recursive Voronoi or whatnot. Uh, I'm sure that in the future I'll make an effect with this. I hope that you like this and you find this useful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.